I didn't always get along with my parents, but things got so much worse when we did a lie detector test. It revealed all of my parents' darkest secrets, but more on that later. First, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification button for more awesome content like this. My parents were always pretty secretive. I never knew my grandparents. I never met any relatives. I suppose I never really questioned it because I trusted my parents. Oh, but how I wished I'd known better. Growing up, I also looked very different to my parents. Like, really different. They were fair-skinned and blonde-haired, whereas I was dark and had chocolate brown hair. We were basically the opposite in appearance. When I was young, I didn't think much about it. But as I got older, I started to realize the differences. Mm. One day I asked them about it. Mom, Dad, why do I look so different to you? My friends at school look a lot like their parents, I said. My parents looked at each other, giving a meaningful look, and sighed. <sighs> we have to tell you something, Tom, they said. You're adopted. I was in shock <gasps> and immediately started crying. They explained to me all about how they had adopted me and how they were so happy they had me as their son. I have to admit, it was jarring to me. I had never even considered it. I was adopted, but my parents consoled me, so I guess I accepted it. Then I started to ask about my biological parents. They told me they had died and they also said I should never ask them about my biological parents ever again. They were quite cross with me, I could tell, but I was used to their behavior, so I just went with it. I was sad that my biological parents were dead, but still grateful I had parents of my own even if we weren't blood related. I didn't ask them about my biological parents ever again. Well, that's a lie, because I did years later, but that was only after all the weird things started happening. They had told me my original parents were from Thailand. When I was 12 years old, I worked up the courage to ask them if we could go there and visit, but they told me no. I was so confused. Why couldn't I visit the country I came from? Then they started acting even more strange. We started to move from our home, going to rural areas, not meeting any other people. I think from ages 12 to 15, we moved schools 10 times. It was that crazy. And whenever local authorities were around or police officers were in range, my parents would drive off or whisk me away. You probably think this is obviously suspicious behavior, but when it's your own parents doing it, you don't question it as much. You'd be surprised by just how much you trust the people you love even if they do suspicious things. It got to the point where I decided enough was enough. I told them we needed to do a lie detector test to figure out what was going on. I'd seen it once on YouTube and I saw that it seemed pretty legit. I figured if my parents weren't going to tell me the truth, then surely this device would tell me the truth. I told them if they didn't do the lie detector test, I would never forgive them or talk to them ever again. To my surprise, they agreed. I think it was because they realized how serious I was. I started searching up lie detector testing facilities and found one close by. We scheduled a meeting over the phone and finally we arrived at the owner's doorstep. He welcomed us in, took us into an office sort of space and attached us all to the device with a bunch of wires. Okay, said the man, introducing himself as Steve. Feel free to ask each other any question. I nodded and thought I would start off easy. Do you love me? I asked my parents. They looked hurt. Of course we do, said my mom earnestly. She's telling the truth, said Steve. I sighed in relief. At least that was true. Did you really adopt me in Thailand? Of course, Tom. We found you in Thailand, said my dad. He's telling the truth, said Steve. I frowned. That was a strange way for my dad to phrase it. He said found instead of adopt, but I shook it off and continued with the next question. How did my biological parents die? I asked. There was a slight pause. My parents seemed to be thinking of a response. In a car crash, it was a terrible thing, they said. Steve looked up at them, then at me. His eyes were widened in shock. They're lying. I looked at my parents in disbelief. What? No, no, that can't be right, said mom. This thing must be rigged. I can assure you it's not, said Steve. Are my real parents even dead? I asked. Yes, they are, Tom. Why would we lie about something like that? Steve sounded defeated as he said, You're lying. Again. I turned on my parents in fury. I can't believe you would lie to me, I yelled. We're not, darling. How can you trust some wonky device over your own parents? 
But that's the thing, you're not my real parents. I stormed out of the room, rushing out the door and back into our car. I didn't even want to complete the lie detector test. I was too livid over what my parents had done. My parents said the device must be faulty, but I had a feeling it was reliable. So that meant my biological parents weren't dead. But why would my parents lie to me about that? Plenty of adoptive kids had biological parents who were alive and living somewhere. Even if I had biological parents who were alive, that didn't mean I didn't love my adoptive parents. It was so strange of them to hide this secret from me. A few minutes later, my parents got into the car and we drove back to our temporary home. I gave them the silent treatment the whole way. If things weren't weird enough as they were, the situation got even stranger. Out of nowhere, my parents started to ban me from watching the news, from going online, from doing all sorts of things that connected me with the outside world. I was really annoyed, mostly because I couldn't contact my friends anymore. It was hard enough as it was trying to maintain my friendships when I was constantly moving across the country. They took me to this cabin in the middle of nowhere. They said we were on vacation, but I could tell something was wrong. They were acting all fidgety around the house and kept peeking through the curtains outside as if on the lookout for somebody. I had no clue what was going on. Then one day, my parents went out to town to pick up some supplies. I decided this was my chance. I finally sneaked into the living room and managed to turn the TV on. What I saw <gasps> scared the living daylights out of me. People were searching for me. Apparently, I had been kidnapped and they were looking for me. And even stranger, my biological parents were on TV too. When I saw their faces, I almost fainted from shock. They looked just like me, or rather, I looked just like them. I thought I could remember a faint memory of being with them. I think we were laughing, but it was so long ago, so I couldn't hold on to the memory for long. They said I had been kidnapped when I was very young by a couple. They showed a picture of the couple, and I literally felt my mind explode as I realized it was my parents. But that didn't make any sense. My parents weren't my kidnappers, right? But then I thought about the lie detector test and the strange behavior, and it all started to make sense. The random moves, the shifty behavior, the lies. Was it all because they were trying to hide me? Just as the news anchor was about to go into more detail on the case, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, and there were my parents standing in shock, anger plastered on their faces. They were furious and the looks on their faces were so terrifying. They took one look at each other, and understanding seemed to pass between them. I was so fearful of what they would do to me. I didn't even know them anymore. My parents, well, no, not my parents, my kidnappers, dragged me into the basement and locked me inside. I was a prisoner. I banged on the door, begging them to let me out, but they didn't reply. For hours, they didn't say anything. Then, hours slipped by, and suddenly, it was night. I thought I was going to be a prisoner for the rest of my life. But then, I could hear someone outside. It was the guy from the lie detector test facility. It was Steve. What was he doing here? I thought I heard him ask my kidnappers where I was. An idea lit up in my head and I rushed to the underground window that every basement has and started rattling on its surface. I kept knocking, hoping Steve would hear, and sure enough, he glanced over and saw my face. My parents realized Steve had seen me and they pounced on him. I looked out the window, desperate to see what was going on. Then, I spotted Steve bolting into the woods away from the cabin. What was he doing? For hours, nothing more happened. I thought I had been deserted. Hadn't he realized I was imprisoned? But then, a sound echoed in the forest. That's when I realized it was police sirens. I was saved. The police arrived and arrested my parents. They didn't even bother trying to escape. There was nowhere to escape to. I waited in the basement for the police to let me out, but when they opened the door, my real parents stood there. They had tears in their eyes and told me they had missed me so much. I was still hesitant. Yes, they were my real parents, but I didn't know them. For 15 years of my life, I had grown up with my kidnappers raising me, but then they said they wanted to take me away from this horrid place, back to Thailand, and I could live with them if I wanted to. I thought about it for some time, but then I decided I would. It was weird, as I didn't know them, but we're getting closer and closer every day we spend together. Steve actually became a close family friend. I asked him why he had been at the cabin that night, and he said he had followed us back home immediately after he saw the news story. 
But he had taken longer than he thought because apparently my kidnappers had been very good at hiding. Eventually, he stumbled upon our cabin and he was so shocked to see my face in the basement window. He then ran off so that he could call the police. He guessed he wouldn't be able to fight off two people at once, so it was better to get more backup here so they could rescue me. I'm so thankful for Steve and that lie detector test. For all I know, if it hadn't been for him, I would still be stuck in that basement as a prisoner to this day. Sometimes I still visit my adoptive parents, or should I say kidnappers, in jail. They did raise me after all, and I will always love them. They apologized and said they did love me. They couldn't have children of their own, so that's why they took me. But that was no excuse. I'm living in Thailand now, and I'm trying to immerse myself in my own culture. It's hard to adapt, but it gets easier, one day at a time.